Hey y'all, welcome to our homestead. The South just went through a natural disaster, a big one. A huge snow, a huge freeze, and it shut things down in a lot of places, especially Texas, for a good week. But for all the blame that's being thrown around everywhere, I want you to realize who's ultimately responsible for you, and that's you. So today we're gonna talk about some small items and tools that I have here on my homestead, but you can also own if you live in the city or somewhere else, it doesn't matter. Have these things available to you in case of an emergency. And they don't cost a lot of money, so I don't want you to think that you're limited by that because in an emergency, spending 25 bucks on something a year prior is no big deal and you can come up with that cash. We're also gonna talk about having powered tools, but having backups, hand-powered backups to your power tools and why that's so important. Let's go. Now friends, I am not here to scold anybody. I'm here because I wanna help you and I care about you. So I had friends that were completely unprepared for the snowstorm and they should have been because you should always be thinking in your mind about worst case scenario. Now, that's not to say you need to be fearful, it just means you need to be prepared. And for some friends who were down in the Houston area who had a difficult time, after hurricanes, after thousand year floods, you should have been prepared. Friends, I love you, so get your head wrapped around it and start preparing with just little items. You can do it. Now let's show you just a few handy little items that can really help in a nasty situation. Now, I have several items here that utilize either propane or butane as their fuel and can help you either heat or cook. So, all of these items I want you to be careful with. I want you to read the manufacturer's instructions on all of them because some of them say they can be used indoor in a well-ventilated area. Some say not for home use. Some say for outdoor use only. So I want you to read first, but you can, in my opinion, use these in a well-ventilated inside area. This one here is really easy to find and it's very inexpensive. This is a little butane slash propane. It's a dual fuel cook, a cooking burner, essentially. So this thing takes these little $2 butane fuel canisters. You can cook on it. It's not expensive at all. You can find them sometimes for as low as 15 bucks, although I wouldn't recommend those. This one was about 30, and it's a really good quality. You will be able to cook for some time on one of these canisters, but the nice thing about it is you can always also use these small propane canisters that are usually for camping, but this comes with an extra attachment for those. So I think it's really important to have dual fuel um, items to either cook or heat with because it gives you an option. If you can find these at the store, great. They're two bucks. Find these at the store, I think they're seven bucks each, and, but sometimes they're out. Sometimes they're out of these. So have options. Find things that have options. Again, I will put everything here that I use in the description below if you're interested. So this is one thing that's incredibly helpful. It always stays around our house and in an emergency situation, we can cook with it. Now, we've got stores of these. If you can't afford a whole bunch of these at one time, buy one. The next week, if you have two extra dollars, buy another one. You can do this on a budget with no problem. Now this cool little thing right here is a little camp stove. It's made by a company called Primus and these are for backpacking and camping. And it has been so valuable to me in many different situations. And it was not expensive at all. I believe I paid around $20 or $25 for this. I honestly can't remember. I've had it for about 15 years. These little camp stoves like this take these isobutane canisters. Now this one is Jetboil in particular, but so many different companies make these. You can find them all over the place. They have them at Walmart also. They are a little bit more expensive, but the amount of fuel that this uses is minuscule. This has lasted me for years. This is a little 230 gram container. This right here is a Mr. Heater. It goes on the top of one of these ubiquitous 15 pound propane tanks that you can find pretty much at any gas station 
or grocery store. Now the Mr. Heater was 55 bucks. That's what I paid for it at the time, about three years ago. And if you already have one of these, you can get them refilled for about $18. That's the cheapest I've seen it. But if you want a new tank, you're gonna pay about 45 to $50. This attaches itself on the top of that propane tank. Now, in the instructions here, it says it may be used for indoor use. However, it says on the bottom, not for home use. It says it may be used for indoor use in a space that is well ventilated, giving one square inch for every thousand BTUs of input. You make the decision. I don't want anybody to get carbon monoxide poisoning. You need to read the instructions and use it appropriately. Make sure you're using it according to what you need to use it for. I'm just telling you options here to keep something warm and to cook something. But guys, on top of all of this stuff, have a couple of sleeping bags handy, just in case. You know, it was negative two here and we have enough blankets and sleeping bags inside the house that we've collected over the years to stay completely warm even if we didn't have the wood stove that was burning. And you can find a sleeping bag rated for 20 degrees for not a whole ton of money. So the reason I'm talking about tools and items that don't cost a lot is because I get a lot of comments on the channel that I can't afford this or I can't afford that. First of all, I feel for you. There's been times in my life where I haven't been able to afford much at all, but you have to critically um, analyze what things that you need to survive, of course, keeping the lights on in your house and providing food and water for your family is number one. But if there's a disaster that happens, having some little items that can really help your family out is important. So allocate and budget your money accordingly. And for those of you who've got cash rolling in, buy whatever you need to make it through. So I know in a lot of emergency situations, your cell phone is a lifeline for you and it's an important item. But what if you can't charge it? What if you're a lot out of electricity? You need something like this, a little solar battery pack something that can charge up by the sun and charge your battery. This one I bought for 25 bucks and it, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Again, in the description below. So if you've never seen one of these, we did a video on this a couple of years ago. We've had it for a few years. This is the Sun Life uh, little emergency radio. It can be powered um, or recharged by the little solar panel on the top, but it's also got this crank here, which charges the battery up. We've used this for its emergency radio features, the regular radio feature, and the light features on it, which are awesome. This has actually sat in my drawer for probably a month and it's still fully charged, as you can see it. It lasts a long time. It's a really cool item. Now having clean drinking water is paramount to life. And whether it's in a giant snowstorm, an ice storm that lasts for a week and a half, or it's in a hurricane situation where your power and your water are disrupted as well. It's important to have something that you can utilize to get clean drinking water for you and your family. I recommend two different items. Now the first is a Berkey water filter. They can run you from about $200 to $500, depending on which one you get and depending on if you choose to get a refurbished one, which is what we did. Ours was $250 and it's able to hold four filters which are good for about 12,000 gallons of water. I calculated it, and at the rate that we drink that water, it'll take us about 11 years to drink that much water, filling it up all the time. So the initial investment of buying that might be a little high for some people, but I want you to realize that it's gonna last you a long period of time. Save up for it and budget for it because it is absolutely the best on the market. Now the second item is called a life straw. We've got a bunch of them in our backpacking equipment in the house and they are great for emergencies. They're very compact and although they don't last a whole ton of time, they will last you in an emergency situation to be able to get clean drinking water from virtually any source. And they're only 20 bucks a piece. So if you had a boil water notice in your area and you didn't have anything to boil your water, having that life straw is hugely important. So for us, we're on a rural water system. And luckily, we didn't have a boil water notice. Nothing went down in our system. But if it did, I have a well on our property. That well has coliform bacteria in it. 
So I could have taken that water from our well, I would have either had to boil it, or I could put it through the Berkey filter, and we would have had clean drinking water that way. And also, we had about nine inches of snow, so of course, we could have used that. Learn some primitive skills as well. Learn how to build a fire. It's really simple. How many of you were Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, or whatever it was? I know they don't teach that stuff in school nowadays, so if you're listening to this video and you're younger, learn how to do it. If you're listening to this video and you're a little older, if you, and you've got kids, teach it to them. Now, for every power tool that I have, I also have multiple backup hand tools. Now, if you are in a long-term grid down situation and you're just not able to have anything to recharge your batteries, you've got projects to do, you've got things to repair in your home, always have multiple backup tools that will take care of the job just as well. So with this past snow event, it was really important for us to have a way to process firewood. Now, having a chainsaw on hand is really, really important. But if there's an extended period of time and you run out of fuel with your chainsaw, what are you going to do? Of course, have a hand tool as a backup. Now these two tools do not do the exact same job. So we are also working on getting a one-man crosscut saw to replace this if we run out of fuel or this breaks down and we can't get another one. Now you've seen this a lot on the channel and the other Toro mower that we have. We have a partnership with Toro and we test some products for them and it's hopefully helpful for you. But what happens when I run out of gas with this? So if this dies or runs out of gas, we've gone old school. This is a scythe. Now you can see it's fairly new, it's modern, it's got an aluminum handle which makes it really light and the sticker isn't even worn off the blade yet. I've used it a little bit, I'm learning how to use it, I am definitely not an expert in using it at all, but I wanted to have this around just in case. Now you're saying, well, why would you even need that? Well, I've talked about a lot why I keep the grass low on our property, and that is because of snakes and ticks and little critters that can get at my kids or my animals. I want those eliminated in these areas, and the best way to do that is to keep your grass low. So I will definitely be practicing with this, and when it comes down to it, this is gonna be a really important tool to have. Now you might think this is expensive to start off with, but I want you to remember, if you don't have any other option and you have to do a job, spending 200 bucks on something like this is nothing in the long run. And if you're saying to me, Eric, well, all that stuff is just too expensive for me to have. I have no money, I'm very poor. I empathize with you because I've been there, but you gotta dig yourself out, do your best you can and think about those things that you need that are gonna help your family out. We dug ourselves out, we dug ourselves out of debt, we did a lot of different things. Move forward, do your best you can, get some things that are gonna be life-sustaining for your family. So we are really trying to make videos that are helpful tools for you to move forward in your preparedness. And I'm not talking about fear, I'm just talking about being prepared for whatever might come your way. Now go watch this video right here, which shows you how big to build your garden for a family of four. Have a great day, we'll see you next time, bye.